All right, so in today's tutorial, we would like to look at introduction to stochastic processes. This is going to be the first tutorial in this course, and we would like to review some basic topics before we start with the main subject on stochastic processes, okay? So today's tutorial would cover a brief review on set theory, and all these reviews will be relevant in our subsequent tutorials, okay? So it's good to pay attention to them. So by the end of today's tutorial, you should be able to define a set, identify the types of sets, and also identify other types of sets, okay? All right, so what is a set? A set is a collection of some items or elements, okay? And we often use capital letters to denote a set. So to define a set mathematically, we can simply list all the elements in curly brackets, okay? So for example, if a set A consists of this element, we have the far user time, far user graduate, we have the far user secret, and we have the far landmark. And let's say we have another set B which consists of this element or the images. So to define set A, we are just going to put all these elements in curly brackets, right? So this is how set A will look like. The same applies with set B. We just have to put all the images in curly brackets. So once we have this, Right, we have this, um, the set A in caps and all the elements in curly bracket, then this becomes a set, the same as with that of set B, okay? So now, what if we want to say that um, a particular element belongs to a set? How do we denote it mathematically? So let's assume that we want to say that and the landmark belongs to set A. To, to, to denote this mathematically, we use the following symbol. Okay, so this symbol basically means that um, the landmark belongs to A. Okay, so this is to show that the landmark belongs to A, and that's what we have here, okay? So um, what if we want to say that the landmark does not belong to B, because we can see that this landmark is not part of the element of set B. So how do we say that this does not belong to set B? So we will use the notation, this notation, okay, to say that the landmark does not belong to set B, okay? Or we can also say that the landmark is not in set B. And this, we can also say that the landmark is in set A, okay? So now how do we determine the number of elements in a set, okay? So in order to determine the number of elements in a set, we use a counting measure known as cardinality, okay? So the cardinality of a set is the number of elements in that set, all right? The cardinality of a set is denoted by the absolute value of that set, okay? So the vertical bar that we have here shows the absolute value of the set A. So let's take an example. Let's say we have a set which consists of this element to determine the cardinality of this set, we just have to count the number of elements in this set. So we have one, two, three, and four. So the cardinality then becomes four. Let's look at set B, which consists of this element. We have three of them. So the cardinality will be just to count the number of elements in this set. One, two, three. So we have three of them, okay? Now they, they, this is just one type of set where the elements are finite, okay? What if you have an infinite, or let's say the uh, the elements in a set are continuous. They are, they are within an interval of rare numbers. How do you determine the, um, the number of elements in that set? Okay, so in that case, we're supposed to use a different measure, which we will look at very shortly. Okay, but that will be covered in a subsequent tutorial. Okay, all right. So now let's look at the types of sets. Right, so the first set that we want to look at is a finite set. So what is a finite set? This is a set which can be counted and has a definite limit or it is bound. Okay. Set which can be counted or has a definite limit or a bound is a finite set. For example, let's look at this set, set A, which consists of this element, one, three, five, seven, nine, can say this is finite and it is bounded, okay? The last element can be obtained. So this is an example of a finite set and we can always describe this um, set by making use of the set builder notation, okay? So using a set builder notation, we can state this set as X such that X, so the X is standing for the element, okay? And the vertical bar that you, you see here 
is read as such that sometimes we can use colon in place of the vertical bar, okay? So this basically means that set A is X such that X is an odd number less than 10, and that's what we have here, okay? So this one type of a set. Let's look at the other type of set known as the countably infinite set. What is a countably infinite set? So this are set which can be counted, but has no definite limit or is unbounded. Okay. For example, set B consists of this element one, three, five, seven, nine, and it is still counted. Okay. So this is a set with annotation. You can say that X set B is equal to x such that x is an odd number, okay? And it will be very difficult to use the counting measure or the canality to determine the number of elements in this set because this will be infinite. It is still counted, okay? For 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, it's still counted. All right. Let's look at the last type of set known as the uncountable set. What is an uncountable set? So these are sets which cannot be counted because they are made up of infinitely many values within an interval of rare numbers, okay? This is known as the continuous set. For example, <clears throat> sorry. For example, the set of rare numbers, which can also be denoted in this form, is an example of what a countable set, okay? Another example is this form. Okay? So set D is made up of uh, a close interval of numbers between zero and one. So this is, Another example of a countable set, which can also be defined in this form. X is such like that it lies within an interval of where numbers between zero and one, okay? So this is just one type of the uncountable set. We have different types of uncountable sets. So let's look at the, um, the types of intervals for uncountable sets in general. So let's look at the first one, which is the open interval. Okay, what's an open interval? This is a set containing all real numbers between A and B. A stands for the lower limit, B stands for the upper limit. Okay, so this is a set containing all real numbers between A and B, but excluding the boundary point A and B. Okay, so we can also define it in this form. X is such that it lies within A and B, but it doesn't include the um, boundary point, okay? So A is less than B. The next type of intervals from countable set is a closed interval. Okay, so what is a closed interval? This is a set containing all real numbers between A and B, including the boundary points A and B. Okay, so this includes the boundary points, which can also be defined in this form, where A is less than B, right? So the last type of intervals on countable set is a semi-open interval, okay? So these are uh, intervals obtained from the closed interval by excluding one of the boundary points. So you can see with this one, it excludes, and with this semi-open interval, it excludes the upper boundary, okay? So these are the types of intervals for uncountable sets. So to determine, let's take for example, to determine the cardinality of this set, you can't use the counting measure or the, or the cardinality that we, we know, okay? The cardinality normally works for finite sets, okay? So if you have an uncountable set like this, then you have to use a different measure known as the Lebesgue measure, okay? But that will be covered in a subsequent tutorial, okay? That is the only way you can determine the number of elements for an uncountable set, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the other types of set. We want to start with a subset. What is a subset? So set A is a subset of set B if every element of A is also an element of P, all right? So we write set A, we write A subset B as A subset B in this form, okay? Where this, sorry, where this indicate uh, the subset, okay? Um, equivalent to be saying B is a superset of A denoted by this form. So if we want to change the, once the symbol moves to the opposite direction or changes to the opposite direction, then it becomes a superset, okay? So there's a subset once it changes to the opposite direction, then we have a superset. So B is a superset of A. So for example, if A is equal to 3 and 8, it's a set of 3 and 8, we have B, which is a set that consists of the element 1, 3, 8, and 14. Then we can say that 
A is a subset of B because all the elements in A is contained in what set B, okay? All right, so let's look at the other type of set known as the universal set. So the universal set is a set of all items or elements under consideration, okay? So um, it is often denoted by the omega symbol or the symbol S, capital S, okay? So for example, if we are discussing rolling of a die, our universal set may be defined as right in this form. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why? Because anytime you roll a fair die, these are the possible outcomes that you can obtain. You can now obtain a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So these are all the possible elements or items under consideration when you need to roll a fair die, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the other type of set known as the empty set. So the empty set is a set containing no element, okay? And it is noted by the symbol or by the open, empty curly bracket. And sometimes we call it the null set, okay? All right, so let's look at the last type of other type of set known as the power set. So let A be a set, the power set contains all possible subsets of the set A, and it includes the empty set as well as the set itself, okay? So it can be denoted by this symbol. So let's take an example. If a set A consists of this element two, four, and six, then the power set of A will consist of this element, the empty set, the set itself, and all possible combination of elements in the set. So we can have two, four, six, Two and four, two, six, and four and six. Okay. Now take note of this. The power set of A consisting of n element has cardinality given us two is the power n. Okay. So in here you can see that we have three elements, n is three. So the power set for the cardinality for this power set is going to be two and the power three is going to be what eight. So we have eight elements here. This is the first one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? So this will bring us to the end of today's tutorial. Please, if you find value in today's tutorial, don't forget to subscribe if you have not, and also turn on the notification bell to get more updated interactions on this channel. So in our next tutorial video, we'll be looking at um, a review on the probability theory, okay? Thank you for watching.